Your Excellencies, as you're aware, on the 3rd of June, 2020, I hosted the first intersessional summit of the Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States, together with colleague presidents. And our chairman, President uh, Ramaphosa, was in attendance throughout the meetings, and I want to thank him for his support. The meeting, indeed, was very successful in addressing the way forward on mitigating the effects of COVID-19 in and amongst our member states. Indeed, like many countries in Africa, the Caribbean and Pacific are also hard hit by the economic impact of the global slowdown, courtesy of this coronavirus. And keeping in line with regional and global response to the pandemic, the summit focused on three key pillars, which is building resilience, keeping economies functioning, and rebooting for a strong recovery, and boosting global solidarity, as well as deepening global partnerships. The solidarity demonstrated by our international partners provides an opportunity for African countries to channel additional national resources to expand our social safety net programs to mitigate the impacts of the pandemic and to safeguard our continent's social economic gains from reversal. While appreciating the magnitude of the crisis at hand and the need for resources to avert the looming catastrophe, I also wish to reiterate that our biggest resource at our disposal is our own people, especially our youth. We therefore need to pay special attention to education and training programs, and indeed we need to harness the digital revolution and innovation witnessed during this pandemic as a catalyst for post-COVID-19 economic revival, and which is a key creation of jobs for our youth. So today I just want to once again encourage us to continue using this kind of platform to elevate our position in the global arena in articulating critical issues in relation to, the transcending, to transcending the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly on addressing the de deliberating uh, debt burden and its effects on social economic well-being of our nation. I further urge us to remain focused and stay the course by prioritizing preventative and mitigation measures targeting the most vulnerable segments of all our populations. Your Excellencies, I take note that this meeting was intended, among other things, as our Chairman has so briefed us, to receive feedback from the AU COVID-19 Special Envoys on the progress that they have made in mobilizing resources to assist Africa respond to the impact of COVID-19. And I join colleagues also in commending our distinguished Special Envoys for the work that they have done so far and indeed look forward to hearing what they have to say on their ongoing engagements with international partners to support Africa's case in combating this pandemic. I'm happy to note that the quick action by the chair, coupled with the solidarity and concerted efforts demonstrated by AU member states, AU RECs, our regional mechanisms, African business leaders, and the private sector, have so far not only helped us slow down to a degree the spread of the virus and avert a full-blown catastrophe, which we continue to want to work together to ensure doesn't happen, but also in helping us mobilize resources in order to defeat this enemy.